Coverage now moves to Little Havana. That's where we find CBS 4's Maribel Rodriguez with reaction to today's big news. Maribel. Eric and Rick, uh, mixed reactions as it always is when it comes to Cuba. And today's historic announcement came as no surprise to many, but some of the people we spoke to say they feel this is a step in the right direction. They feel this is a good thing. And they believe the Cuban people may actually benefit from it, but not everyone agreed. It's the main topic of conversation once again, Cuba and its next chapter. A passionate debate at the also oh popular Versailles Cuban restaurant after President Barack Obama made the historic announcement that the U.S. Embassy will reopen in Havana after more than 50 years. I think it's very good and the Cuban people will benefit. Manuel Abad, who came from Cuba just four years ago, says he knows firsthand what the Cuban people are going through and with the reopening of the U.S. Embassy in Cuba, the excuses are over. It's about time. No more excuses that everything missing in Cuba is because of the Americans. But not everyone feels the same way. I think a total waste of money and time. I think the Castros are going to manipulate the situation in order to get money for themselves. They're going to make themselves more rich. And you know what's going to happen to the people in Cuba? They're going to starve. Jim Case and the mayor of Coral Gables, who was the head of the U.S. intersection in Havana for several years, feels the American flag flying over the embassy will not change the relationship between Cuba and the United States. So I don't think it'll make any difference whatsoever. It, it, the only thing that will make a difference is if the Cubans decide to allow their own people to participate in the discussion of the future of Cuba. However, political analyst Andy Gomez says he believes Cuba will benefit. It's a good thing for Cuba because it's not only opening relationships with the United States, but all of a sudden you see it has opened relationships with the entire world. He also believes the U.S. will benefit but says it will not happen overnight. From the United States point of view, absolutely, it is in a positive step. What goes next, we have to wait and see. This is a long process and it's not over July 20th. It just begins. And on that day, Secretary of State John Kerry is expected to travel to Havana to reopen the embassy. Now, experts say there's still a lot that needs to be done, such as lifting the travel ban, also funding, uh, finding the money to, uh, uh, to, to build and to, to rebuild the embassy and adding additional personnel. And now that is all up to Congress. We're live in Little Havana, Maribel Rodriguez, CBS 4 News. Thank you, Maribel. Well, today we are also hearing from other South Florida lawmakers about the opening of the embassy. Senator Bill Nelson releasing this statement saying, quote, I still distrust Castro, but we have to get that regime to open up, stop human rights abuses, and give the Cuban people their basic freedoms. I think reopening the embassies is a necessary step in the long process towards achieving that goal. Republican presidential candidate and Florida Senator Marco Rubio releasing this statement opposing the opening of the embassy, saying, quote, throughout this entire negotiation, as the Castro regime has stepped up its repression of the Cuban people, the Obama administration has continued to look the other way and offer concession after concession. And keep it here for the latest on the reopening of the embassies in the U.S. and Cuba on CBS. Miami.com, you can read what Raul Castro wrote to President Obama 